the biggest thing for us is not censoring ourselves because we're trying to make it real. We're trying to make it possible. We want to put it somewhere that makes sense. And when you're writing, sometimes it doesn't have to be a place and location. You can just have fun and go with it. Welcome back to the My Future Business Show. It's Rick Nusky here. I hope you're doing wonderfully well. I tell you what, I'm up early this morning because I'm on the line with the wonderful DC Gomez. Welcome to the show, DC. Hi, Rick. How are you today? Yes, yeah, like I like to say all the time, I've got two feet in a heartbeat. I can't really complain too much. Now, on today's show, you and I are going to be talking about uh, your work as an author and the host of the Inside Minds of Authors podcast. And uh, it's going to be about all things books, writing and storytelling and, pro and possibly a lot more as we go through through the list. But uh, first things first, where are you calling in from today, DC? I'm actually in East Texas, so it's afternoon for us over here. A very hot afternoon of all days, of course. But yes, I am in East Texas, very close to the Arkansas border in the U.S. Yes, wow. I, I, I see the fires that are happening in Canada. And, you know, I think to myself, it, it's just a, an amazing thing that we're having to live through at the moment. I hope they uh, move through those that fire season fairly rapidly and it all settles down for them. Now, tell me, have you lived there all your life? I have not. I'm originally from the Dominican Republic. So my family is actually in Massachusetts. So they're experiencing those wings coming from Canada and having to deal with that. And then after the military, I moved down to Texas. So I'm a little gypsy kind of Dominican, if that makes any sense to people. <laughs> Absolutely. Now tell me, what do you love about the place? What What's a landmark and what do you like to do there? Believe it or not, this is the weird part. I'm really a city girl and I moved down to a really, really small town. So it's itty bitty. And I fell in love with it. I didn't think that was going to happen. I always thought myself I was going to be moving back to New York City and I was going to be doing the hustle. And after a couple of years here in Texas, I really enjoy the Southern hospitality. I love how friendly people are. I love that you can still drive down the street and people wave at you. Like, yes. first time I had a friend, yeah, first time I had a friend coming from New York, they're like, do you know these people? It's like, I have never met them. You <laughs> <laughs> just wave. She's like... Oh my God, what's going on? So yeah. Yeah, there's something to be said about that. I grew up in a small country town myself and we owned a farm and we could sleep out the front in our hammocks and not fear anything going wrong or anything getting stolen. That's a wonderful environment to be in. Now, what have you learned about the people? One of the things that I love about it, even though, you know, things are changing in our countries and, you know, communities, you have all these things about crimes and everything mm. else. People are still friendly and people still want to know people and people are still loving. And I think that's truly amazing to me, especially when you're going in a place. I realize the biggest lesson here, if I go to a place more than four times, they know my name. Then I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful situation to, to so, be in. Yeah, that's fantastic. I, I know that you enjoy uh, taking long walks and tell me a little bit about uh, how important, you know, going on walks is for you. One of the things, prior military, I don't think I realized how much I miss or I enjoy being outside. Yep. The crazy thing is, I have a sun condition. I'm the only Dominican, I think, right now that can't be outside without blistering. Oh. So a lot of my, oh God, yes. A lot oh. of my walks, and I live in Texas, so yeah, we are wow. sunny, <laughs> sunny and bright eight months out of the year. So the fun thing about it that has changed is having to get very creative to enjoy the outdoors, having to be creative, being outside, and enjoying the trees, or just walking. I'm having to learn to be much more, you know, innovative when Careful, it comes to my innovative. exercise. Yeah, well, look, you know, we we all do have challenges, don't we? And it's not, it's not the problem necessarily. It's how you respond to it, isn't it? Okay. Now, and what do you do with it? Yeah, what you do with it. I, I know that uh, I had to laugh because you talk about these pesky UV rays and uh, your true nature is coming out because your vampirism is now showing. I thought, uh oh, <laughs> here we go. So, I, go ahead. I have a really dark sense of humor for anybody who's concerned about it or just wants to know. <laughs> and what do you do when you're hit with situations that are outside of your control? Like this happened at, when I hit 39. So it's one of those things that wasn't like I suffer from, you know, allergies all my life. I didn't suffer from sun allergies and I mm. didn't have these things. So when you start looking at things like, we're just going to make the most of it. I'm just going to have fun. I'm just going to laugh about it. Yep. It's just going to see what happens because there's no control over it. So because I write a lot of urban fantasy, that became really fun just to play with it. And everybody goes like, are you really a vampire? I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> what am I going to do with you guys? <laughs> are you for real? <laughs> now yeah. tell me, do, uh, do you enjoy a movie? I absolutely enjoy the movies. If I could spend a lot more time just hanging out in a movie theater, I would. Yes. So I will really have a blast, yeah. 
Is it is it one of those things that you go cross genres? What's your favorite type of movie? Do you have one? I don't. Mm, I don't do a lot of dramas. I think as I get right. older, I'm not quite into the crying and the heartbreaking. If you give me some action adventure, that's me. I love bully. I love superhero. It's kind of one of those like. Oh, give me I'm some marbles, you. DC. Yeah. yeah give I'm, me something fun. Well, it's great that you've got DC as the name. That's, that's all I can say. So much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Now, when we're growing up, I uh, used to have pets. Did you used to have pets in your family? I have not growing up. I have no. pets now as an adult. Oh. I literally have um, getting in, I got engaged. My fiance has two cats and I have one. Mm -hmm. So I have been known to be the undercover cat lady. <laughs> so now I really have cats instead of just one. So yes, <laughs> it's, just, joke. it's funny because we're we're hyper allergic to cats, but we're we're okay mm -hmm. with dogs. It's really weird, isn't it? Isn't it strange how things affect people different ways? That is, it's strange because I'm allergic to the world instead of cats and dogs. And I'm like, <laughs> how does that happen? Well, going back, things. going back to our childhood, DC. What do you remember about your childhood? Is there any fond memories that you could share with us? One of the biggest transitions, especially in that early age, and we moved to the States when I was 10 and a half. Mm -hmm. So growing up in Massachusetts compared to Dominican Republic was amazing and just different. The what, like the, My first images of the United States for anybody who goes across countries and goes to Massachusetts in October, like I'm looking out the window, I'm, I'm coming from a Caribbean country, which is gorgeous and it has to do water. And yep. I look out the window and all I see is cemeteries Oh. And dead trees. Uh. And I looked at my mother and I was like, what are we doing? Where? <laughs> no, I was like, where are we going? <laughs> and it was that weird feeling of growing up very much like 75 degrees, 85 degrees in the islands to come into the States and having to wear a coat. Like they brought sweaters to us to the airport and we like get bundled up. And I'm like, what are we doing here? <laughs> what are we so doing? Yeah, I love it. Thank you very much for sharing. I, I, I wonder, you know, um, in our formative years, we often, not always, but often have people around us that we look to, um, you know, for advice, for mentoring, if you like. Did you have anybody like that in your family or in, in your circles? My dad is that person, not just to me, to say, I think to the whole community. Yeah. He's growing up, I don't think I realized my dad teaches in parable. I think it took me a few years as an adult to realize <laughs> he's telling me these stories and I finally realized, are you talking about me? Is that me? You're the pretty Jesus. We've been doing this my whole life. He's also the reason I deeply became a storyteller. It's just because my house was always full of books. It's the one thing, you know, you can get away not doing chores if you have books around the house. So books yeah. were always around. My parents were both very immersed in just literacy. Just enjoy it. Have fun. And they encouraged it both in English and Spanish. So it was interesting to see when I got to college how different my upbringing was. How much of a traditional yet very liberal household my parents were raising. Yeah, it's, um, it's one of those things where I, I look at um, people who are writing books and it takes a special type of person to actually get to that end point. And we're going to be talking a lot about that in a moment. But tell me, what's a day look like for you? Are you an early riser? Do you like to sleep in like I do? <laughs> what, what do you do? Talk, talk us through your day. Honestly, I'm a morning person, but nobody in my house seems to be. <laughs> so my, my fiance and I have opposing like schedules. So he works nights, I do days. So normally my mornings are very busy. I usually start meditating. I am a meditator. I teach yep. meditation to, for anybody who's interested. So I will start my day. Like, I don't know if anybody has pets. I'm, I'm feeding cats, yes. fixing house, prepping, you know, whatever I'm doing for the day. And then I'll meditate before I start my actual day. And then I have hours that I can kind of today, like Fridays, I'll run some errands. I have days that all I do is just write. I have days that I kind of tend to do marketing. So, and on the side, I also have like a day job that I tend to adore and I don't talk much about it, but yeah. So I have multiple schedules that are very, very busy. Yeah. And I live by my phone. Like my calendar is officially my lifeline. So <laughs> if it wasn't by my calendar, I don't know how I would do everything which I find to be very interesting. I do a lot of, I have an Amazon live show on Wednesdays. I do a TikTok live on Thursdays. Yep. So I have to be very cautious of my time or else I get numb to myself. And yes. sometimes people say, like, is that a bad thing? I was like, I feel very off balance when I don't have alone time and I don't have time just to decompress and yep. get myself back in order. How important is that time for you to have that downtime from work and from authoring and just, just being you by yourself? It's my creative time. It's a time where you recharge and we take it for granted. I think mm. our nature, especially if you are 
big into trying to be, you know, type A personality, you're know, goal oriented and you want to accomplish things, do you feel you're going to pack your schedule 24-7? Yeah. The hardest thing is just to give yourself some time. Like I'm now making sure that I have time to exercise. That I, I'm a spinner, so I hit a spinning bike. Yep. But also to be able to have time just to listen to a book or read a book or just sit down and cook or do something that doesn't involve me having to be online, connected, and always going. What's is the one thing that... You, Yes. So sorry, I cut you off. Uh, I apologize. Yeah. What's your favorite food? As soon as you said that, I thought, hmm, this would be interesting. I go back and forth. I love Spanish food, probably because I'm Dominican, but I love pasta as well. I actually enjoy doing home cooked pasta yep. instead of going out to eat. So I can go anywhere from, you know, very comfort food to, you know, if I'm going out to eat and I'm in a hurry, I'll grab a pizza. Like I'm a pizza fanatic and I blame New York City for that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and it's understandable. Now, I, I know that everybody has bucket lists, so I have uh, certain things I want to achieve in my life. What's one thing in your bucket list that you'd be willing to share with us? Right now, we'll be probably going to Egypt. Egypt. It's always been on my it's always been I have an obsession with Egyptian mythology. I have an obsession with the pyramids. A lot of my books feature it. So anything like that's one of the biggest things on my list is literally going to Egypt. See, that was what I was going to ask you. Can, and may I um, say your background with all those books is just, it's just capturing my eye. I'm finding myself <laughs> looking at you, but then just looking past going, what titles can I identify there? It's such a wonderful <laughs> collection. Now, you talked about listening to books. Um, is, is, that a, is that a preferred option or do you, do you enjoy the hardback, sort of picking up a book, that tactile feel? Audiobooks have become a recent adventure and I want to put it out there because I have a hard time sitting down with an audiobook and not doing something else so if i'm going to disengage i'll be playing right now i'm playing so do go and listen into an audiobook like my hands have to be holding something and doing something <laughs> for me to be able to do it oh it's i horrible. know oh, i know <laughs> preferred method is always going to be a paperback or hardback like, i like the feel and it also makes me stop like having something in my hands truly knocks me out the library behind i have asked people have asked me if it's real if it's like actually you know background i'm like no it's actually like this is probably the sacred room in my room yeah, but in my house it's wonderful i love it here here's the funny part this is a room nobody knew ever existed until i started recording and i needed something that really was kind of fun and cheerful i was like you know i had this entire room of books so one side is the library, the other side is my art studio. Yep. So it has become some multi-purpose. So people get a sneak peek of what my mind looks like. A bunch of books. <laughs> it's kind of all no. inside of my head. <laughs> it's got a bit of pop of color. It's got titles. It's got everything to keep the audience interested. Because again, I'm just wandering around and having a look at everything you got there. Now tell me, DC, <laughs> tell us a little bit about your artwork. I literally get to be playing everything from watercolors to trying a little bit on oils themselves. I do mm -hmm. photography a lot. I do a lot of mixed media. I think that's the best way to describe it. So like I got paint brushes on one side of the place. I got pencils in another. I got sketch pads. You name it. It's there. But it's the one it's there, but it's also the one thing that doesn't get to be monetized, if that makes any sense. As I think as creatives we're always looking how to share our art with the world. And it's very dangerous sometimes for us because we can be easily trying to put a price or a tag to our art. There mm. has to be something in our world that doesn't get to be monetized, that yep. we can go back to that downtime, that we can go back to that grounding stage. Those are the things that don't get monetized. Like the paintings I do, we're calling it card making. So I've been doing this for years. I go and take a class probably about twice a year, which is my grading cards. And it's fun and it's exciting and it's just something to connect with other people in my community. But it's something that I get to mail to people that I love. Yes. But it doesn't get monetized. So it's yeah. kind of finding the balance between being a creator, being somebody who's always busy and still making art that doesn't have to have a price. I find it fascinating when you think of the likes of Banksy and any other famous artist. They never started out, did they, with the intention to be known. Uh -huh. This guy's completely anonymous for the most part. Nobody really knows who he is yet. People pay just ridiculous sums of money. I mean, it's an obscure sort of situation, I have to say. But <laughs> tell me, how did you get into writing books? Where did this all start? I have 
have a background in film and television. So the writing books is a strange size story. When I tell it, everybody gives me this look like, really? Uh. I, so here's the, the behind of the business and the art all crashing together. I left, I graduated from film school and I joined the military. So I joined the U.S. Army yep. because I needed to, I wanted to learn about my people. I was going to write stories about people and I realized I'm 21, 22 and knew nothing about nobody. So <laughs> let's meet people so I can write about it. All I, knew, all I knew about was college students, filmmakers, and probably Dominicans. And I was like, mm, I need a little more. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. Well, just a little bit. The one thing that changed my life in that plan was I joined the military of July 2001. Three years later, we had September 11. Yeah. My entire world changed. I went from wanting to write stories about people to how do I defend the country that I love? How do I defend my family? How do I change that? Mm. And I also realized how quickly you get lost in that bubble, how quickly you can get lost in a different track of everything you thought you were going to do. And I found myself literally 10, 15 years later going, hmm, I have a great job, love my pe employers, love everything I'm doing, the people are great. And I was miserable. I hated all the things that I was doing on a much more holistic basis. I wasn't mm. following my dream. I wasn't following my purpose. I wasn't doing anything creative. And I realized I'm in a small town in East Texas, what kind of films can I make? And I ended up one summer, literally, July is like that month where I get to reminisce on my, how I got here. <laughs> and I'm crying to my spiritual director and I'm having a meltdown. And I literally came up with this whole writing a book. And she said, why not? And I'm like, who's going to read this thing? And everything I said, and she shut down. Everything I had, she's like, yeah, whatever. Wow. And I found myself pretty much from July to November writing this novel as fast as I could to put it everything. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't say it to anybody. I was terrified of what anybody was going to say. And came up with this amazing journey of finding myself back home. And that's what I'm calling it. Of writing, of creating, of finding myself in that space that was truly mine. Yep. And be able to put all these things together, be able to be a creator, be able to still do corporate America and be happy. And that's something that I hadn't been in a very long time because I kept trying to do everything for my true passion. So writing became that escape. And then I realized, you know, I can do this. <laughs> I don't have to leave the town. I don't have to move anywhere and yeah. still be able to create. Do you find, um, uh, you know, mindset plays a part in um, how inspired you are on any given day to actually put pen to paper, I guess, if you use pen and paper or typing? How do, how do you get motivated if, if you're not in the right mind, frame of mind? If I, deadlines are usually the best for me. I'm a mm -hmm. type A personality. If I have yep. something to do with something, that's going to be a huge motivator. But if I'm ever stuck, music has a way of kicking that back uh, into gear. Yep. I would... I will start blasting music on a spinning bike into my mind and my body stops fighting each other. So you said mindset. A lot of the things that I find is we spend more time telling ourselves either why something's not going to work or what I tell everybody. I meet most aspiring authors spend more time writing the, you know, dissertation to the award they're going to win than actually writing the book. I was like, you know, you should write the book. It might be done by now. Yes. But it's, it is that fight with ourselves. We spend a lot of time giving things for this amazing word you're going to write or saying why you're not going to write it instead of actually giving yourself permission to write it. That's great feedback. Thank you so very much. I'm absolutely loving this cool DC. Now, tell me, I touched a bit, up a bit on pens earlier. What's your preferred modus operandi when it comes to getting your ideas onto the page, as it were? Do you, do you still think there's power in the pen? I do. I am very much an outliner, so I have index cards all over my house. I think for <laughs> And I'm really, I even write cursive. I'm that old school. So. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I do too. I find it easier. But it's very much therapeutic for me. If I can yes. write it out and let those thoughts come into play, then I can go back and type the book. But I literally, a lot of it starts with crazy brainstorming. I know people look at me kind of crazy because I have little index cards everywhere. And I'm the author that as soon as I start writing, I giggle as I write. Oh, I cry. <laughs> I'm very emotional. So I don't like do that wife. in public. <laughs> I don't do my writing in public. I was writing, I was doing I was writing for a short story that I have to, that is due coming up. And I was writing at an event and I know I started giggling and my fiance looked at me, he's like, what are you doing? And he looked over my shoulders and I was like, and this is why you don't write in public. Because <laughs> everybody <laughs> stops. Was, 
What is it? I'm like, oh, nothing. Yeah, well, hang on. I actually want to read that now. If you're having so much fun, I want a bit of that fun too. Thank you very much. Now, <laughs> now, now tell me, DC, what type of books do you write? And I know you talk about novellas, and there'd be a lot of people on the call today would love to know the different types of books, the genres, and, and what a novella as opposed to a normal book actually is. One of the biggest lessons that I had to figure out was the different types of books. So if anybody's curious, trust me, I think everybody goes through it. I always define books by pages. Like how many pages does a novel have to have? And my biggest lesson is books are actually described by the number of words, not right. pages, which I didn't realize. So a novella is literally still a full story, it should be. And it's usually a book that is between 14,000 to about 24,000 words. Yep. So it's much smaller. A novel is anything over 50,000. I think that's usually the easiest way. You can have a shorter story than a novel, and a short story is usually under five kind of things. And those numbers can be rough. Ideally, when you're thinking about it, is anything under the 50, 40,000 words is not considered a novel. That's kind of the biggest difference for everything. What I write, I'm still the kid that can make up their mind. So mm -hmm. I'm... I'm a multi-genre author, so I have more of a brand than a specific category. So I do everything from urban fantasy to straight fiction. Mm. With that in mind, I have done children's books. I have devotionals. I have novellas as well as I have short stories. And even, of course, I have novels. So what can you find if you picked up a DC Gomez book? There are going to be tons of quirky characters. Yep, yep. Very samey plots. You're going to have lots of action adventure. Depending on the book, it's going to be the heat level might be low. I, I'm still not very much into the whole full on um, heat level. Yes, it just yes. doesn't it doesn't go with the brand. But you're going to have lots of actions. You're going to have lots of dark humor. You're just going to have a really fun experience. I'll sprinkle in some social commentary throughout the books. For the most part, it's, it's a really way to escape and just enjoy an adventure that you can have in your own home. Do you have a particular title that you've written that is your favorite? I have a couple. To this day, I think right now, my fifth book in the Intern Diary series, Judgment Day, is still my favorite. Mm -hmm. And it's because it's the same title of a hip-hop song for anybody who listens to hip-hop. Yes, yes. Back in the day, uh, Method Men has a song called Judgment Day. So and I love that one. So it's very Absolutely. much tribute to the Wu Tang Clan for anybody who still knows who they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I certainly do. There you go. <laughs> now, tell, tell me, what are you writing at the moment? Do you can you share a little bit? Yes, we have. I have a dear friend, Jamie Dalton, and I have decided to put a short story collection because we have nothing better than add more projects to our lives, of course. Ah, of course. And I, of course, it's just happens to me. <laughs> So we're doing a short story collection. We have seven other authors joining us and it is Tales of Halloween. So it is all short stories that have featured to some extent werewolves. So it can be we have anything from high fantasy to urban fantasy. My story has one of my characters in my urban fantasy book and they're going to Egypt, of course. Yes. To, to stop a crazy gang of uh, werewolves trying to waken up the god sect. So you get a little sneak peek of them trying to stop this and how madness happens to them. So it's a really short, fun story stories in this collection. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Now, I know that there are a lot of people on the call today who are aspiring authors, but they um, are often terrified and they don't know the first step. What would you say to an aspiring author? What's the process that maybe you could share with them to get them past that first hurdle? One of the hardest things for me was trying not to have validations from the people that I love. And this might sound kind of strange. I find out that I think our books and our writings is like our children and our dreams. If we're not careful who you share that dreams to, they will actually kill your dreams. So you have to be very, very careful. Is You have to be a little selfish to be a writer. You have to set yourself some time that it's just yours because this is not one thing that you can share with anybody else. You're going to be writing by yourself and you're taking time away from your family, your loved ones or whatever else you're doing. But you have to be disciplined with that time. It's like making an appointment. Whether you call it going to the dentist or the doctor, you have to put it on your schedule and you have to give yourself that time. And you can't compromise with that time in order to get it done or else something else is going to take it over. So you have to be a little selfish. You have to be a little fearless. And you have to be a little secretive. You know, treat your story with that same respect and passion you would anything else. And then give your permission to write. Some people need to have an outline, write it. Some people are panthers, do it. Whatever gets you thrill, 
So just commit to giving yourself, and it doesn't have, everybody says, I need an hour. Give yourself 15 minutes and see what you can do in 15 see minutes. you can go. Now, yeah. I know that a lot of people struggle with the, the idea of storytelling. Tell me um, the importance of storytelling and, and how somebody may be able to get better at doing it. When it comes to storytelling, first you have to decide what type of book you want to do. So one of the biggest lessons I've learned, and I have a lot of practice and research in it, they said, your book is either going to motivate, it's going to educate, or it's going to edu- um, inspire or entertain. Yep. So you yep. have to pick one of those things. When you're thinking of storytelling, a lot of the things you see in books, especially for aspiring authors, is they're going to give you the whole entire world before starting the story. If yeah. you're going to write a murder mystery, kill the guy. And then go from there, right? Go whatever that action is going to kick the story up, start there. You don't have to tell me every tree and every universe, whatever you're going to do, start <laughs> and do a big. And then you can run from there. I've seen a lot of authors that it takes them a very long time to find that voice. And you're going, where are we going? You know, we tend to yeah. forget what the desire object is. What is that incident that's going to kick the story? Put the incident as close to the beginning as possible and then go. Yeah, great feedback. Thank you so much. I, I, I wonder, where do you get your creative spark from? Do you Is it situational? Do you see things happening in real life that transfer into your books? I'm very, very blessed that I have a very active imagination. <laughs> Maybe occur sometimes. Let me put it this way. <laughs> Could be either one. I'm pretty sure I was convinced at one point in time that my neighbors, my previous neighbors were serial killers. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I love it don't know why i don't even know why i have this crazy thought but i'm pretty sure it came it was in one of my books i ended up putting it somewhere because that's the fun thing about it is when it comes to creativity the biggest thing for us is not censoring ourselves because we're trying to make it real we're trying to make it possible we want to put it somewhere that makes sense and when you're writing sometimes it doesn't have to be a place and location you can just have fun and go with it it's so yeah cool. i have a Yes, and it's um, the biggest thing for us, as I see, to have my little group, and ours is like, why? Like, why? Or why not? Or what if? Like, those questions are always in the back. Like, what if I put my main character in hell? How do I get her out? Those are the questions. Out. Yeah, how do we get her out? Like, how did you get there? And once you're there, I'm like, how do I get you out of there? Can you get out of there? Like, what do we do? Like, what's yeah. going on? What's next? <laughs> you know what? So, I, I, um, I'm, I'm fascinated by AI in terms of book writing and i think is it dangerous is it something we can embrace and use partially or do you what do you see for the future of ai in book writing well this is a very controversial topic for a lot of Mm. writers because to some extent we're using ai right now if you're using grammarly pro if you're using pro writing aid you're using ai let's be honest like as much as you're using it right there whether we like it or not, there's doing that behind the scenes, helping you edit on your own, is helping you making sure that you're not plagiarizing other people's stuff. So it's using AI as a whole. Mm-hmm. I have a friend who's blind, who's also a writer. So his AI is reading back the book so he can write them. That's so, right. so there's so positives. Amazing. Yeah. There is positive. It comes back to the negative always comes back to where you let the AI just run with it or you're using yeah. it to plagiarize something else. I am very open to the possibilities, but I'm also that kid that's always what if. It yep. comes back to the intent. It will come back to the, you know your ethical behavior behind it. What are you trying to use and how does it get better? When it comes to the R, this yep. is going to be, think about computers. Like how many people were fighting computers? So, you know, we got stuck in typewriters for a while. Mm-hmm. So it's going, to be, it's going to be an interesting transition. I am always excited to see what's going to come. Yep. But I also want people to be aware that we have a lot of people who are like, I won't use AI. I'm like, you're using it now. And if yes. you have a phone, your the phone future. has, yeah. What do they say? The future is already here, isn't it? Now, oh, yeah. tell me, I know that you're involved with the Kickstarter project. Tell us a little bit about that. I am getting ready to launch a Kickstarter. It's going to come up here in October. So it's kind of exciting and a little nervous. I'm the kid that needs to do a lot of research before I jumped into the water and be like, yep, okay, yep. So I have done, I have sponsored a lot of campaigns. I think I've sponsored at least 20 campaigns. I've watched a lot of my friends, done a couple classes in it. And my goal is I want to do a motivational book. So it's a Monday motivation. My newsletter gets Monday motivations, obviously, every week. I've been doing it for a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And has has been requested by a lot of my readers. They want a book. How do I have it home? And it became those questions, and this is a creative question for anybody. Do I invest the money 
to put this book together and who's going to who wants it you know yep. am i actually going to go in the black am i going to go in the red what is it so this is a great way to bring a project that is very unique so coffee books are probably not the biggest sellers out there like photography books but it also gives my audience an opportunity to sponsor a project of something they said they want bring into fruition without the creative having to truly go in the hole to make this book so it's kind of fun i'm excited to see how it comes out Absolutely. a little nervous yes well and uh, on that um will we be able to gather a link from you to share towards that is that at all possible is that how we find it yes the link will be available i'm thinking probably in the next couple of weeks so we're right. not there yet because they have okay. to still go going through the whole process of like the validating process. the review and yep so yes fantastic all right thank you very much now tell us a little thank bit you. about your show inside the minds of authors when did that start what it's it what is it about <sighs> We're hitting about episode, I think right now the last episode of Polish for like 158. And it started. Time flies, doesn't it? I don't even know what happened. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> We're serious. <laughs> it has, has been mind blowing and amazing. And it started right before the pandemic. I found myself at the beginning of 2020 looking for something creative to do. Like I mentioned, I'm a little ADD, OCD, and I'm always jumping through projects. And I always have my hands in different things. Yep. And I wanted something to express creativity in a different way. And that's kind of what that took place. So it became, what do I do? What exactly do I come up? And one of my friends requested, like, why don't you try podcasting? And I'm like, A, hey, what, pod- yeah, what is podcasting? <laughs> let's talk about this. <laughs> How do I do this podcasting? And once again, let's go back to research. Let's go back into figuring it out. And the, the question really for me was, what do I like that I'm willing to do for a long period of time without getting bored and it's going to be exciting for me and maybe to other people and books is my thing so anybody can tell yes. I, wanted, I got an opportunity to talk to author and I wanted to talk to passionate authors as a new author at the time I realized god nobody wanted to talk to me nobody ever had. <laughs> it became the thing nobody wanted to hear about this books that I wanted to share with the world so inside the minds of authors got birthed and created and has been received very like widely. It's also very niche. So yeah. if you want to know about different authors and there is no genre in terms of what we focus, we do anything. I have had everything from children's authors to business to erotica and everything yep. in between. And everything in between. Oof. But it yep. has been it has been an opportunity to share books with people and authors who normally nobody would notice about how popular as well as up and coming it has been truly amazing the one thing the podcast is different than most people were not prepared that is kind of fun is the authors get to read a portion of the book as oh. an author this is the fun part because i've been in a lot of panels i've done a lot of conventions and book events and everybody's talking about these books like and my book and you're showing the book guess what nobody has read this book nobody knows what this book's about and there's not a common knowledge or dialogue. So the podcast gives me often an opportunity to read a couple pages. You know, anywhere I've authors I've read 30 seconds, I've authors I've done 10 minutes. But yep. it gives us a common language on the book. It gives the listeners an opportunity to be like, oh, I like it. It also gives us a starting point. So nothing feels, I want to say, uncomfortable. You yeah, having a yeah. you having a conversation about a piece yeah, that yeah. we all have listened. Yep. Love it. All, all have common language, all have this idea, and every author gets to pick the piece that they love. So then you get to tell, like, mm, why did you pick that piece? And yeah. we get to have a conversation not just on, A, how did you start this book, but also what makes you smile, what one advices when you give. And it has become really interesting to see the reception of it and how much people are like, hey, I really like it. I've been much more amazed at the people that have stopped me saying, I listened to the podcast and I'll stop and be like, <laughs> on purpose? Like, you know, uh, what? What are you doing? <laughs> do you know what? you When you started talking about the podcast, I know authoring is your thing and writing is your passion. But when you started speaking about the podcast and how you help others through your podcast, you started to light up. So keep it going. I think it's a wonderful thing that you're doing. I've certainly <laughs> listened to a few uh, episodes of it. And I love the idea that you're giving people the opportunity to share some of their book with uh, your audience and uh, hopefully we can help you share your show and your book work with the my future business audience now as we uh, near the pointy end of the show dc tell me a little bit about where people can find uh, your book in actual fact before we do that may i ask who is doing your artwork i looked at oh. bloodline and i thought that is just an amazing cover 
I am so blessed with my cover designers. Christine Girardi is the cover designer. She's out of Incredible. Boston. Who does my urban fantasy series, uh, Miss Foiler. It does my non-magical ones, so she does my cat lady series. So Christine has been doing, we redid all of my covers because, so my books have been through transitions. And oh, this yes. is fun. This is the ones that actually captures the whole imagination that I write urban fantasies and that I write action. So Bloodline is actually free on my website. It's a short novella. It starts a little dark. I don't know why. I got inspired by a TikTok video that traumatized me. But it gives you a really fun novella. And if you sign up or if you get Bloodline and stay in the newsletter, you get three other free short stories as well. So this is my way of giving back to my readership and anybody yep. who's curious about what I write. Like, here, take a taste. It's take free. <laughs> You'll be fine. And the cover is just, it's fabulous. Yeah, that's great, Viva. Again, there's so much to learn, uh, so many great stories to be had. Now, where are people going to be able to access your books? They can check out my website. While I joke that my website and most websites are like a highway in Texas, they're always under construction. For the <laughs> most part, it's pretty up to date, so they can check out dcgomez-author.com. It gives you links to the podcast, so you can listen to it directly from there. You can check out where the books are located. You can get a link to my Patreon, so you have links everywhere. Learn a little bit about me, which is kind of short because I'm like, hey, let's both. And you can download Bloodline while you're there, so yeah. Absolutely love it. This has been a wonderful call. If anybody's on the call today, they're interested in getting their hands on Bloodline and all of the other wonderful works that DC is putting out there, please visit dcgomez-author.com. I'll be making sure that the link is available below this call. No matter where you see it, you're certainly going to be able to get through to DC and all of your wonderful work. And with that being said, DC, thank you very much for joining me on the show today. Thank you so much, Rick. It has been such a pleasure and I had so much fun.